Welcome YouTube to another installment of me going crazy about the Romanian grammar. What are you talking about? Everything is easy in Romanian. Yeah, you know, if you talked to your teacher for six years in school about the Romanian grammar, it might. If you had the Romanian family to speak to, yes. But most of the people who learn Romanian have a difficult time to find people to speak to. Hey now, I don't have time to babysit everyone. Yeah, I bet this guy doesn't have many friends. Anyways, today we cover conjunctive. All you need to know and more. Also, probably the most important lesson you need to know about this mood. But more on that later. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts all down below. And let's start. Welcome to modul conjunctive or the conjunctive mood or the subjunctive mood as it is called in the other Latin languages. However similar it is to the other Latin languages, you will see there are quite big differences and we will get into all of them. As similar it is to the other Latin languages, this subjunctive or conjunctive mood is quite different and you will see the differences if you know for example Spanish or French or Italian uh, those differences in the coming exercises. So the first thing to talk about the conjunctive mood is and excuse me but I will use those very journalistic terms we will use this question of what. So what is a conjunctive mood? What does it express? Well it expresses an unfinished action, but one that could happen. The first time I read this in Spanish, I was extremely confused. In Romanian, you learn it as, you know, it has the se, and you just put it after the first verb. What an unfinished action means is that it's not like a present tense action that happens now, or a past action that has finished in the or it did finish in the past or a future action that will happen the difference between present past and future compared to conjunctive is that this one in conjunctive could happen keyword could happen is just something that is not really defined yet. You'll see more about this in a second. But until then, let's cover a little bit of the when. And I put this big heart here for a very obvious reason. The conjunctive or subjunctive expresses ideas of opinion, like un place se, preference, prefer se, will, vreau se, Wish, aș dori să, emotion, mă bucur să, personal expressions such as îmi este frică să, recommendations such as vă recomand să, or doubts, mă îndoiesc ca el, ca ea, să. The important thing to know here is that the idea, this emotion, opinion, will, wish, are expressed before the subjunctive or the conjunctive. So this verb, this main verb that is before s, tells you kind of the feeling, the opinion, the wish or the want of the people or person who speaks. I would like just before we move forward to specify that yes, in Romanian s most of the time comes I would say 90-95% of the times the se form, so the conjunctive form comes after the first verb, whether we talk about îmi place, prefer, vreau, aș dori, mă bucur, and all the other ones that were just mentioned. Most of the times it comes after, but there are also times that comes alone. We will talk more about that at the end of this video. But regardless, the way I teach my students is by telling them use conjunctive after you have already used a first verb. In English you have 
the option to use two. Yeah, I like two. I prefer two. I want two. Jump, run, eat, and so on. All right then, now let's get into the more theoretical bit where we see how we build it. So, the how is basically as we already kind of have seen. You use the se and the verb, the verb in present tense, except the third person. So if we took, for example, a pleka, we have yo dot 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 se plek, tu se plec. We're not going to cover the third person yet. Noi se plecam, voi se plecați. And then again, third person, we'll talk about it in a second. So as you can see on its own, it doesn't really mean much. To say yo se plec or yo se vin, tu se plec, it might seem very confusing. It does make sense, and as mentioned already, we will cover this a bit later. But on its own, most of the times, it is very confusing and I recommend you know how to use the s, the conjunctive, on its own before you use it, because it might create some misunderstandings. Now, going forward to see the third person in more detail. Um, I hope you are able to see this. Yep. So. When we look at this table, we have on the left conjugations, right? Conjugation one, two, three, four with I and four with U. Then we have some examples of verbs, in case this was not clear. Present tense in the third person and conjunctive in the third person. So as you can see, we're talking about the conjunctive in third person. Very important to know that this is both singular and plural, right? Many people don't get this straight away and they need quite some time. And I don't blame them because in the present, the third person plural is uh, very similar. For example, if we look at a pleca, right? We have yel placa, but then ye placa. So in this situation, you'll match, right? But if we go, uh, I don't know, for example, to a merge, we have yel merge, but then ye merg. So some people might want to say, instead of he wants to go yel vrasa merge, and then they want to go ye vor se merge, they might just say, Ye vor se merg. Because in the present tense, the third person plural, for example, for, for, for this conjugation, uh, is the same as the first person singular. So careful with that. So having a look at this, most of the times uh, there will be uh, exact changes uh, in uh, the third person between a uh, if in present tense is a uh, to conjunctive e, and exactly the way the other way around, so the e will go to a. Uh. Yeah, this is present, and this is conjunctive. So most of the times this will be an exact change. What I mean by that, there will be no phonetical implications, but more often than not, that will unfortunately happen. Looking at, ple uh, at placa, because you remove this uh and you add the e, right, the Romanian phonetics talk about uh, adding an a next to this vowel, something that we'll cover in season one a little bit later. Uh, so that is a phonetic change, but for example, uh, here, yeah, it's yel place and then se placa. 
So the E changes directly to a, fuge to fuga, then um, coboare, coboare, those are direct changes. And then what is a bit more tricky in the third person, and I would like people to remember this is this one. So the long conjugations, right? This is how I, this is what I call long conjugations. When you don't just add one letter at the end, but instead you add three, sometimes even four. And urește as well. This is not super accurate. This should be also in red. So if you'll excuse me, I'll just change this very beautifully here to urasca because this is also a different one, right? You have urește, urasca. The letters change quite uh, dramatically if I am allowed to use that word in this situation. So those three instances, this one, this one, and this one, are all quite special um, because the three or four letters at the end change quite a lot compared to the others. The others are quite simple. However, on those three occasions, you will still get a version of E, right? Or a, uh, sorry, not here, but here, yeah? You still get the letter change at the end. So nothing really crazy there. You still get the uh, where in present tense you got the E, you still get the E where in present tense you got the uh. All you gotta do is to learn and practice this change. Yaze, eze, este, yaska, este, aska. This is probably the most difficult part uh, for conjunctive. I know that, and maybe that's why let's try to conjugate those uh, verbs properly. So for this third person conjugation, we would like to look at a couple of verbs, those that I said they're a bit special. If we look at the long conjugations, the way I call them long conjugations, basically the first and fourth conjugation in present tense that have this longer ending. So we'll take for this instance the verbs a lucra, a iubi, a ure. For a lucra, we have yo se lucrez, tu se lucrez, el ya se lucreze, not se lucreze. Noi se lucrăm, voi se lucrați, ei ele se lucreze again. Then for a iubi, eu se iubesc, tu se iubești, el ya se iubească, not se iubește. Although that's quite funny, it's quite used in songs nowadays. Noi se iubim, voi se iubiți, ei ele se iubească. And finally, a ură, eu se urăsc, tu se urăști, el ea se urască, not se urăște, noi se urâm, voi se urâți, ei ele se urască. Cool, so please don't forget probably the most important thing in third person, I would say from beginner to advanced, if you, if you may, this is beginner to know this, that a uh changes to e and e changes to a. Uh. And then along the way, when you get to more advanced, intermediate or advanced, yeah, you should also learn uh, probably an intermediate specifically. Yeah, um, one second, let me do it like this. So in intermediate, you probably want to learn uh, this, so those those three, yeah, those all go there. And then when you get proper advanced, you should be able, so we're, we're talking here about like B2+, plus, right? You should get um, correctly all of the phonetic changes. This beautiful subject of Romanian phonetics. So things like when the A is there, when the A is removed from there and stuff like that. Nobody will blame you at the beginning for phonetics, but you should at least get the rules right. Yeah, Romanian in school is learned and taught through grammar. Uh, so, so rules are, are probably, you know, when you speak to a native speaker are uh, uh, more important than, uh, than the way you sound, to be honest. 
A Romanian is quite true. If you if you get a good uh, if you if you get a good Romanian across, if you make yourself understood well, the pronunciation is second or third or fourth or whatever. Um, it, it's definitely more important to make yourself understood than uh, the way you sound. Cool, and then we can move to finally uh, the, the last kind of theoretical uh, topic. I put this uh, very expressive face uh, next to the regular verbs because to be quite frank there's not much to talk about this. This is a table and the only probably things I would like to point out apart from oh, the, the quite obvious that Afi and Ava are here in this table, nothing probably crazy about that and also Alwa, right? Uh, three very regular verbs. Even Avra, it's quite regular. So all the all the all your typical uh, uh, verbs that you expect to be irregular or you have seen before being irregular, they will be here as well. Uh, together with uh, also Amunka is quite regular in present tense, so that's not crazy to to see here. Uh, asta, abe, ashti, ada. Um, so what does uh, this irregularity mean in conjunctive? Apart from the crazy things that happen with a fee, few fee, fee, fim, fits, fee, to be honest, this might be, <laughs> this might be actually regular for some people since it's so mad in the present tense with yeste and sunt, right, and changes so much from the infinitive, here goes back to the infinitive. Then uh, in ava, you would like to uh, look at, oops, that is a great uh, drawing there. So you want to look at aiba. Because Aiba is uh, not only very different than anything else with Aiba, but I did notice that people forget this form because it's quite, quite different. If you want, maybe you can remember that it looks like Naiba and Naiba, well, maybe you can research that word yourself. Then uh, the other interesting thing about the irregular verbs is the vra, vra in uh, and this to be honest every time when you think about third person plural in conjunctive, think about avra because avra is one of the only two verbs that in present tense together with ava. And if you if you know this already, you should probably if you got to this part of this video, you should know this already, but. Uh, yeah, so ava in ye yele it's au and avra in ye yele is vor. So in present tense, there are the only two verbs that have different ye yele form uh, than yel, ya, or yo. However, what's quite cool is that this can be a reminder for you the conjunctive third person for avra is a reminder for you that vra and any other verb in third person plural conjunctive. So basically all this line here, yeah, they are the same as this line here. We, don't, we did talk about this, but you know, this is a good reminder. Uh, there are a couple of other things I suppose about this. Most of the times uh, the, um, the other irregularity, I, I think the most frequent other irregularity is uh, here that uh, the third person, this is wrong, this is wrong, yeah, sabe, sabe. What I wanted to say is that here the, the third person singular will actually not change the ending. This is one of the most common irregularities in uh, conjunctive. Jel shtie, jel se shtie, jel vre, jel se vre, ja be, ja se be. Ja, 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 se, ja, uh, jel, de, no, this is different and this is different as well. So, yeah, for some of them, the third person stays the same as in present. Unfortunately, as I just said, the irregulars are not much to be talked about because you just need to learn them. You have to spend time with the table and you need to practice them and it will come natural over time. Finally, we can go to some tips, some good to know tips that are all lit. 
four things that you would really like to know about the conjunctive mood or the subjunctive mood. First is this third person madness. But more important in the third person is that the third person plural is always the same as the third person singular. Unlike the present tense, where sometimes you have the third person plural being the same as the yo or the first person singular. The second very important thing about conjunctive that you must know is that it also can mean, if used alone, an imperative, like a really, really strong imperative. So it's like a very, very heartfelt command that people express. So, for example, if I say, se nu stai acolo, or se mănânci tot din farfurie, that's a very, very strong, very um, forced, let's say, imperative, a forced command, something that you it demands somebody to do right now. Parents say that to children. Warning signs tell that to, well, everybody. And Ceausescu used to say that a lot in his speeches. From this second good to know tip comes also the third, because with great power comes great responsibility, as Uncle Ben used to say. But also keep in mind that you have with the imperative and with this usage of the conjunctive, because it's used alone, right? You also have different tonalities. And with the different tonalities, people can understand different things. For example, let's take the sentence Să știi că vreau să merg în parc. It can be just a normal uh, sentence said to somebody. Uh, over text, for example, it might not mean anything. It's just like, I let you know that I want to go to the park. But if we speak face to face, if the accent goes on uh, the beginning and you say it in a strong way, să știi că eu vreau să merg în parc. That is very important for the other person. You let the other person know uh, that you will do this action no matter what. But if you say it with a different tonality, like să știi, eu vreau să merg în parc. Or eu vreau să merg în parc. It's something that you think of. You haven't decided yet, but it could happen. Coming back to the very introduction, where we said that conjunctive is something, it's a way to express something that could happen, an action that could happen. So careful with this tonality. And finally, the fourth and maybe the most advanced tip here, bear in mind that unlike other Latin languages, the conjunctive in Romanian has only two forms, the present and the past, or perfect. That's important uh, up to a point right now because we learned everything so far as being in present. We will do a different video covering the past or the perfect. And with that video will come a lot of very advanced usage of the conjunctive because using conjunctive imperfect, it's something that maybe even native speakers don't know very well how to do. So to remember from this lecture, don't forget that conjunctive is very similar to the subjunctive in other Latin languages, if you know any. It is an action that could happen. It is most of the times an opinion. It's a uh, expression of how you feel or uh, what you believe about something, what you kind of want, the wish or emotion. You uh, use it with se and the present apart from the third person, which is arguably a mess, but can be quite straightforward if you spend enough time doing it. Then you have quite a few regular verbs in conjunctive. And then uh, some good to know tips, some um, very important uh, ideas around uh, how to express, his, express the conjunctive as a uh, imperative. But we will probably have a different video covering that because that is uh, quite an interesting Topic and it's also quite a cultural one um, and you definitely don't want to mistake the use, misuse, right, the, the conjunctive in, uh, in this imperative way. So now that we have had a look at it, conjunctive looks quite easy, right? 
with a little bit of challenge around the third person. What I noticed is that people like you that study Romanian as a second language or a third or a fourth tend to focus a little bit too much on that third person or get completely freaked out. I would personally suggest that you learn it in your own way. Yes, it is a Romance language conjugation, so different verbs will have different endings. And yes, phonetics in Romanian play this extra hurdle that you have to jump. But the most important lesson in this is that with some time and patience, you can master the conjunctive, even in the third person. If you like this, drop a like and a subscribe. Tell me what you think about this and if you had struggles with the conjunctive in the past. Also, hit that notification bell because it will let you know when we upload videos. Since recently, I post quite often and you might want to be updated. And go on Discord to join this ongoing conversation. Until the next time, vedere.